Unlike modern societies, ancient peoples did not deal in individual colour tones as much as they dealt with colour groups and colour families. For most of our known history, blue, for instance, was part of the black colour group. Research suggests that the major colour groups of the ancient world were, by and large, the same for most societies, these colour groups being black, white, red, and sometimes yellow and green, but interestingly, never blue. British researcher William Gladstone discovered that the colour blue was not distinguished independently in the ancient world. This is brilliantly explained by this informative excerpt from the Y Files. Much of modern literature is, in some ways, derivative of Homer. So Gladstone wondered if Homer was colorblind and saw blue as maybe something else. So he went through thousands of pages of Homer's writing and counted his references to color. Black is mentioned almost 200 times, white about 100 times, red is mentioned 13 times, yellow and green fewer than 10 times, but blue? Zero. So Gladstone looked through other ancient Greek writing. Nothing was ever described as being blue. The Quran, the Hebrew Bible, ancient Chinese, Hindu, Icelandic, no blue, not once. These ancient texts reference colors with pretty much the same proportion as Homer's epics. Oh, and human eyes are the same now as they were back then, so why couldn't they see blue? So even though the ancient Egyptians were the first to successfully isolate blue pigment, which they called irtu, and we know as Egyptian blue, the colour itself continued to be used within the context of simply being an expression of black. This is demonstrated by the illustrations of deities who were certainly described as black deities such as Ausa, Heru, Amin, Ra, Knum and Min, but these same deities were often depicted using either black or differing compounds of blue and even green pigment. The indigo plant, a deep blue-green plant, was considered black, as were both the day and night sky. The ocean wasn't blue, it was a shade of green. The sky wasn't blue, it was light black. Blue finally emerges as its own color when the Egyptians invented a way to produce a blue dye. So unless you have a word to describe a color, it becomes really difficult for humans to perceive it. And there's proof of this, even today. This ancient color interpretation still exists even up to very recent times amongst Nilotic populations of Africa. In a 2006 paper titled Color Categories and Category Acquisition in Himba and English, researcher Debbie Robertson conducted controlled studies amongst English and Himba populations. She observed, In the case of navy blue, which lies perceptually between English blue and black, for English speakers, this is in the same category as focal blue. For Himba speakers, however, it is in the same category as black. Understanding this differentiated perspective of colour amongst these ancient Africans, the use of green and blue to represent the hair and skin of Egyptian deities should now become clear. These colours were simply derivatives being used purely as expressions of the broader black colour group. Worldhistory.org states, Blue, or Irtu, was the colour of the heavens, the dominion of the gods, as well as the colour of water. Blue was used for the hair of gods, specifically lapis lazuli, or the darkest of Egyptian blues, and for the face of the god Amun. Thus blue did not stand independent in the ancient world. It was a synonym of black. Blue and black were veritable iterations of the same expression of colour, this is similar to how we may view magenta, mauve and maroon all as iterations of red today. Interestingly, even as recently as the Middle Ages, dark-skinned black populations of Europe were referred to as blue men by the Norse. So, in short, the great black Orsa was indeed black to the Egyptians. But now we have a logical explanation as to why he, like other gods and pharaohs, though being classified as black, could be depicted as blue, black, or green on Egyptian reliefs. Hail Osiris, stand up, rise up. Thy mother Nut gives thee birth. Thy two sisters make thee to journey. In thy name, Kemware, the great black one. So we have the sense of blackness being at the very heart and the essence of the beginning of things, right at the very beginning, 
of the African development of their worldview.